Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Amy Buckley. I am the creator of Lemonade Instead, which is a platform talking about all things grief, trauma, mental health, along with all of the happy things that life has to offer. Like I said, my name is Amy, and uh, when I was 20 years old, I lost my identical twin sister. If you want to read more about me or my story, I will link down below the Good Morning America article. If you want to be the first to get videos on grief, trauma, mental health, make sure that you subscribe. Uh, I'm going to be sharing tips and tricks for family, for friends, uh, anyone that has gone through grief, trauma, or mental health. I'm going to be sharing stories too of how I have tried to make something out of my life. I am living a productive, happy life, and I believe you can too. Uh, so if you want to read more about the purpose too of Lemonade Instead and kind of my idea behind it, there I will link down below that video and you can be sure to check that out. I will also be sharing videos about my personal experiences and things that I've gone through to uh, hopefully help you relate to things that you have gone through and uh, also to kind of give an insight of someone who is experiencing it experiencing it so that you can better understand your loved one. So today's video we're going to be talking about what to say to your grieving friend. Uh, I will give you five things that I suggest to say to a grieving friend, uh, things that I think are appropriate and uh, hopefully help guide you to further that conversation with that person. So I want to start off the video by talking about uh, just as humans, we want to help. We want to fix things. So uh, when you see somebody going through a tough time, you know, especially someone you love, you really want to, you want to help them. Uh, of course, you know, when I see someone hurting, it hurts me. And especially when I see somebody hurting that I love, it's going to, you know, hurt me very deeply. So uh, we want to fix it. We want to be able to help as much as we can, but we have to understand that we cannot fix the loss of someone. Uh, nothing you do or say is going to take that pain away. Uh, there's certainly things you can do that will be helpful rather than hurtful, and that's really what we want to focus on. Uh, what can we say that is going to be more helpful than hurtful? And um, we certainly don't want to put that person in more pain than they already are, and we just want to be conscious of what we're saying and kind of guiding that conversation again. So let's get into what to say to your grieving friend. Number one. I know there are no right words. Now, this may be, seem simple and uh, you might not think sympathetic enough, but it's really important to address that we, we are aware that we cannot take the pain of that person away. We're aware that whatever we say cannot take it away. Uh, and, you know, as much as we want to be able to say something that will take it away, we can't. And it's important to, you know, acknowledge that we know there aren't any right words. Number two, I don't understand your pain. This is really important. Uh, we hear all the time about, you know, I understand I'm going through this. I understand I'm going through this. It's really, that is putting their pain kind of back onto yourself and kind of now opening the conversation to talk about yourself. And we really want to focus on that person. Uh, we don't want to make it about ourselves. We really want them to have our undivided attention. It's also true that you don't understand this person's pain. Uh, regardless if it was the same relationship that was lost, um, example, sister, mother, father, uh, it is not the same. You don't understand their different dynamics, family dynamics, relationship dynamics, uh, all of it is different. Uh, so you you know, we, whether you have lost your sibling as well, you don't understand my exact pain and I don't understand your exact pain. It goes both ways. Uh, so we can certainly relate and resonate with one another. And I find that, you know, very helpful. You can uh, watch the video that I made about my purpose and I kind of explain that a little bit more in there. I just don't find it helpful comparing losses, especially in the beginning. So we're really talking about what do we say to our grieving friend? You know, someone just lost somebody. What are we going to say? Saying I understand your pain made me feel just kind of my pain a little bit minimized. And again, it wasn't 
it was bringing it back on the person. So we are now, we've shifted from talking about me to you and what I've lost to your loss. Uh, and again, we really just want to focus on that person right now. So if that's something you guys want to talk more about down the road, once that person's grief uh, journey has been a little bit longer, that might be appropriate. You can kind of guide, let that person guide you. Number three, I will support you the best that I can. The best that I can. Uh, this is important. So we got to listen to those words. I will support you the best that I can. I need to be telling my friend what I can give them. Uh, what don't set up unrealistic expectations. For example, right now, I would not be able to tell a grieving friend, call me anytime because that's just not realistic. You know, it might be you can call me from 730 to 930 anytime between 730 and 930 at night I will I would love to talk to you uh is it I can meet you on Monday mornings at nine you know what is it what are those realistic expectations and you set those out maybe making specific times and locations to where you can actually be there for that person uh so again it's i will support you the best that i can uh setting those expectations knowing that there is going to be a a limit to what i can do for you uh but i will do the best that i can that i'm capable of uh, absolutely will do what i can do number four if i say or do something wrong i'm sorry this, again, is setting the expectation that you are human and, you know, you might mess up from time to time and just acknowledging that you're not going to be perfect and you're not going to be able to say the right thing and you truly are sorry about that because you, more than anything, want to be able to say the right thing. You want to be able to do everything perfectly. Uh, you want to be able to help as much as possible. And that is an unrealistic expectation. Uh, we're going to mess up from time to time. We're going to slip and say something that might, you know, be triggering or something like that. And again, it's just setting it up, telling that person that we want to be there. We want to do everything we can. Uh, we know there's going to be hard times throughout this, but we're here. We're here for you. We're we are going to try to do everything that we can. I also think it's important to say this rather than adding tell me if I do something wrong. I feel like this is putting a task on the griever that they don't, they don't need. They don't need something else to their plate. Um, for me in my situation, I, I, that kind of would make me, I guess, angry. Uh, it would, it would just be irritating to me. I felt like I already had all these other things going on, all these other things to do that were completely unfair. Just life is unfair. Why do I have to do all this? So now I have to tell you when you're doing something wrong, potentially hurt your feelings, potentially start some confrontation when I'm just trying to figure out how to get out of bed. Uh, you know, it's just something that they don't really need to be put on their plate right now. So again, it's saying, I'm sorry if I do something or say something wrong. I really am. I am human. And it's not, you know, tell me if I say something wrong. Tell me if it hurts your feelings. Of course, if you feel like you have that relationship with that person, again, it's like I had said in one of my previous videos, I'll link down below where, you know, it's saying, read, you know, re who's your audience, um, get to know your audience and uh, what is your relationship like with them? If you feel like you can do that, then sure, of course, by all means. But uh, again, if it's extremely traumatic, uh, you know, that person is going to be experiencing some mental health issues and it's important to just lay out the groundwork uh, to try to best set up you and them for this relationship moving forward. And I do want to address, you know, not being perfect and possibly messing up, you know, and for your relationship, uh, it's just the you guys can get to that point where the griever is going to be able to give back to your relationship uh, a relationship is a two-way street right now especially in the beginning uh, of a grief journey I believe that it really is a one-way street the friend is really giving all uh, and the friend will be able to give back again one day but not today uh, not tomorrow not the next day one day um, but I just think it's really important to set that up and let that person know. Again, it's letting that griever know that 
you care about your relationship and if something is done wrong you are sorry about it and that person may not be capable of understanding if you are wrong in that moment or understanding that you know there's a capacity level here that we're talking about from a griever especially uh in a tra traumatic situation uh so they just they don't have the capacity to even understand relationship uh cues at this moment they don't have the capacity to really have uh a two-way street relationship with you at the moment so it's really keeping that in mind and trying your best not to have your feelings hurt in the moment number five you are important to me and so is your pain this might seem simple uh, and kind of like all the other points, but it's so important. It's really saying you are important to me and so is your pain. Acknowledging that pain, acknowledging that trauma, acknowledging what's going on in that person's life and saying it is important to you. Uh, that's just really setting them up for... Again, you acknowledging that pain and being aware of the situation. A lot of times grievers can feel like all eyes are on us, that, uh, you know, we are the elephant in the room and people don't know what to say. So just addressing the situation and addressing that elephant in the room is very important. It can, again, set that griever up for knowing that you are aware, you're aware of the pain, you're aware of the situation, and you're are expressing the importance of your relationship with that person and their pain. That's really important. Hearing from your loved one that their loss is important to you. That means that the griever can kind of, okay, now it's, I hear from you that it's important. So that means that if I want to talk about it, that you're going to be there to listen. Uh, maybe not be there in that exact moment, but that you are willing to listen, that you are willing to take on that information. Thank you so much for watching this video. Like if you found this video helpful, comment, uh, let me know your thoughts and uh, subscribe if you want to get weekly videos and updates from me. Uh, please check out my Instagram, Lemonade Instead, Facebook, Lemonade Instead, and website, LemonadeInstead.com.